Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anita Nielsen, and I'm the Director of Annual Programs and Donor Relations for Toronto General and Western Hospital Foundation. I'm honoured to welcome you to the second Behind the Scenes Lecture of 2009. We have quite a turnout today, and I want to thank all of you for joining us. As you can see from the slide behind me, we have a wonderful representation in this room from our donors who support the hospital in a variety of ways. We have members of the R. Fraser Elliott Society, a society that was named in honour of one of our most committed benefactors and the inaugural chair of our foundation, R. Fraser Elliott. I'm also pleased to acknowledge our members of the Frederick Banting Society, which was named in tribute to our own Dr. Banting, who pioneered the use of insulin at Toronto General Hospital in 1922. I see many of our Circle of Life monthly donors in attendance, and their gifts provide a vital revenue stream for our hospitals year round. I'm also pleased to welcome our partners for the future, who provide future funding for the hospitals through bequests, gift of life, gifts of life insurance, et cetera. And finally, I would also like to welcome our donors who single-handedly enable us to do many important things for our hospitals, such as build operating rooms, fund chairs and fellows, or purchase the latest and greatest imaging equipment, for example. Together, your gifts provide for a more advanced healthcare environment and help us to undertake and treat some of the most complex cases in Canada. Today's speaker, Dr. Michael Failings, is the acclaimed medical director of the Kremble Neurosciences Centre at Toronto Western Hospital. The centre is breaking new ground in diseases of the nervous system. Dr. Failings is a scientist, neurosurgeon, clinician, educator, volunteer, editor, and also a fellow fundraiser. We thank him for taking time from his very busy schedule to update us on his research activities in regenerative medicine and help us to understand those answers that we seek for brain and spinal cord injury repair. I'd now like to invite Linda Bryson, the Director of Campaigns at Toronto Western Hospital, to introduce Dr. Failings. Thank you. Thanks, Anita. And thank you all for coming to this really exciting uh, lecture at the behind the scenes. I've worked with Dr. Failing since I started working at the Toronto Western Hospital, and I have to say it's my extreme pleasure. Not only is he one of the world's top, neuro top neurosurgeons, top scientists, top cl cl clinicians, he's also a very good person. And I think many of you know him. He, he said he looked around the room and knows many of you probably inside and out. <laughs> Dr. Failings is currently um, running more than 30 research programs and conducts more than 200 surgeries a year. So he is indeed a busy man just with his work at the hospital and the research institute. On top of that, he holds, he holds many academic positions. He's the research director for the Department of Surgery, Division of Neurosurgery, and he's recently been appointed the director of neuroscience for U of T. He is also advising on treatment protocols for, for several outside organizations, which include the National uh, Football League and the Department of Defense in the United States. So what's happening is he's providing the, the uh, treatment options, the best practices for people that have severe impact to the spine and the, and the nervous system, and they're coming to him. So when they have a question about the spinal cord, the, the main answer is, have you asked Dr. Failings? Dr. Failings is also one of the McEwen Center Regenerative Medicine Scientists, and he's an active member of the American Association of the Neuro Neurological, Neurological Surgeons in Congress of uh, uh, Neurological Surgeons and Society for the North American Spine Society. He's the editor-in-chief for the journal Spine, and he's an editorial board member of several prestigious neuro neuroscientific publications. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Michael Failings. I always enjoy hearing that. I, I, I wish my mother were here. Um, <laughs> um, 
I'm very honored uh, to see so many uh, uh, friends and benefactors uh, in, in the room, and it's uh, indeed humbling to be here before all of you. And it's particularly humbling to see, to, to hear those, uh, to hear those uh, words, which are far too kind. But I, I'm going to try to uh, live up a little bit to those words uh, this afternoon and share with you some of the excitement related to uh, regeneration and repair of the injured nervous system. So just give me a second to change my slides. <clears throat> so we're going to do a little interactive thing here. So how many uh, people in the room uh, either have had or have a relative who's had a spinal injury due to trauma or degeneration or some other kind of a problem. Let me just see a show of hands. Wow, so a significant amount. And of course you might say, well, that's perhaps not unexpected because of course this is gonna be a lecture which is gonna be largely focused on spinal cord injury. But did you know that current estimates of spinal cord injury have been proven to be highly inaccurate? The, the Christopher Reeve Foundation just published a recent estimate of uh, spinal cord injury, and it turns out that the um, prevalence of spinal cord injury is about five-fold higher than previously thought. It turns out that there are over 1.5 million Americans who have a spinal cord injury. That's 0.5 percent of the population and in fact the incidence of paralysis is around 5.5 million people. So, so this is a, a very important uh, topic and in fact it's considered to be one of the holy grails of, of medicine. And so I, I've termed this talk the injured spinal cord can we fix it but when I talk about injury we can really think about that quite broadly. It can, of course, be injury due to trauma, which is what I'm initially focusing on, but this could be due to uh, injury due to a stroke. It could be injury due to multiple sclerosis or other diseases. And in fact, we don't have to limit this to the spinal cord, which is really an extension of the brain, but we can think about uh, problems in, in, in the brain uh, as well. If you uh, happen to go to the, to the um, British Museum, you may come across uh, this remarkable wall carving, which is from the uh, Mesopotamian era, 2600 BC. This depicts a lioness that's been wounded through the back. You'll see that there are two uh, arrows uh, through the spine, and, and, and uh, this animal has a, a flaccid paraplegia. And this corresponds to the time when the Egyptian physicians were initially describing uh, for the first time the medical complications of spinal cord injury. And in the Edwin Smith Surgical Papyrus, which dates back from this time, spinal cord injury was termed to be an ailment not to be treated. Now, of course, we've come a long way from this uh, era. And in, even during my relatively brief career, I've witnessed remarkable advances in spinal cord injury, but nonetheless it is important to reflect on what a daunting uh, problem this has been over, over the ages. Before I begin, I wanted to uh, acknowledge the many members of, of, the, uh, of the team, uh, the funders. I see that Kent Bassett Spears is in the audience and, and certainly the Ontario Neurotrauma Foundation has been integral to our work, as have been many, many other agencies, and, and in addition, uh, the donors, and many of whom are, are here in the audience today, are, are, ac are absolutely critical uh, to, uh, to this. And uh, if we think about the idea that it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a society to solve a problem of spinal cord injury or brain injury, and really we all need to to work together. But what I hope I'm going to be able to provide you is maybe not all of the answers, because I sure don't have all of the answers, but perhaps a roadmap. And we now have that roadmap in terms of how to get there. And it's not going to be a question of whether we can get there. We will get there. The answer is really when and, and, and the exact details of those solutions. 